Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another edition in Scan Forces Educational Seminar Series. My name is Brian Berry. I'll be your host and master of ceremonies for the day. And today is really exciting because quite often when we do these presentations, we're showcasing a portion that's pre-existing in our solution, something that already exists in the Scanforce ecosystem. But today we're introducing something brand new. And the uh, statistics on the number of people that are joining us uh, show that out. Uh, thank you very much for joining. We have a great mix of partners, existing customers. Thank you very much to our existing customers that are joining us and quite a few prospective customers that are interested to see who we are and what we do as well. So we're going to be talking about our new image capture technology today, leveraging some existing power that's on the devices that our existing customers already have. And this can be a standalone uh, option for you. And it can also be paired with BSD's InstaDots application. So we've invited them to come along and participate as well. So we'll hear a little bit more from BSD uh, towards the end. But let me go ahead and roll on and I can get my screen to advance. There we go. By way of agenda, since we do have an audience today that includes quite a number of people that are new to us here at Scanforce, I'll spend a very brief intro just to tell you a little bit more about who we are and what we do, and then we'll dig into the image capture itself. There's an inbound and an outbound version. We'll talk about both options, and we'll do a live demo for you and show that. Then we'll talk about the InstaDots at the end and leave a little time at the end for some Q&A. So you have the ability to do the chat feature, to send in questions, so please do that and we'll get those answered. Okay. So if you've ever been on one of my presentations before, you've heard me say, so I'll say it again, I don't read slides. We all went to kindergarten, we can do this ourselves. But the big takeaway here is we've been doing this for multiple decades. We've been around a long, a long time. We grew out of the Sage 100 world and we just did some, some updates and ran some new reports and we found that we now have eclipsed the 1,000 install mark and over 10,000 users on our platform, both milestones that we're very, very proud of. So I wanted to highlight those. And also, I always like to point this one out right here in the middle every time. Our solution works in both a connected and a disconnected environment. And what that means is if you're one of those many, many people that I talk to when I do demos and they say, you know, Brian, we don't have the greatest Wi-Fi coverage. We have some dead spots or sometimes our people have to go out in the yard to unload or load something and they don't have Wi-Fi coverage out there. Does that mean I can't use your solution? The answer is absolutely. You can still use ScanForce. It works great in that environment. We have the ability to store information on their handheld in the resident memory of the device and be able to disconnect from Sage, complete the entire transaction, and then when you reacquire that Wi-Fi signal, we'll sync up and send the data back over to Sage for you. Okay. We work on iOS, Android, and Windows uh, PC types environments. By far and away, Android is the most popular. We partner primarily with Zebra Technologies. They're the the best of breed when it comes to the rugged mobile barcode scanning type devices. And so they have the Android units and that's what the vast majority of our clients are using. Okay. Now, to look at the overall perspective, the elevator pitch as to who ScanForce is and what we do, most people think of us as that barcoding company. And that's great because that's what we think of ourselves too. We're barcode people and we have a WMS, which stands for Warehouse Management System, if you didn't know. Now we have three different versions or a difference that have different levels of functionality. This is not a small company, medium-sized company, big company thing. We have some big companies that use our core product, the most basic one, because it meets all their needs. And then we have some small mom and pop shops that use our premier version that has all the bells and whistles. And the reason they use it is because there's a functionality in there that allows them to remain efficient with a very small number of people. So the version or addition of our warehouse management system that you use is based on your need, not your size. And the very first conversation that you and I have when we're debating this, which one do we need, we'll get to the bottom of which one makes the most sense in your world. And by the way, we make it really easy to upgrade if you ever decide to start small and then grow into one of the more advanced versions. Something that most of our clients use is labeling because after all, barcoding company, what good is a barcode scanner if you don't have a barcode to scan? So labeling is ingrained, it's built into our solution, and it can be done at receipt of goods. If you're a manufacturer and you make something, then we can label the new something. You can also print on the shipping side too. Over here, I mentioned manufacturing. Of course, we work with bill materials from Sage and the newer production management. We also have an add-on companion piece to production management called Make to Order. 
So if you're one of those people that doesn't necessarily make to stock and have everything on the shelf, but you do more make to order, we have this server side piece that will watch you enter sales orders and it will automatically create the production management work ticket for you. It just takes one step out of the process every single time. There's some cool bells and whistles in there. I would love to talk to you about that if you're into manufacturing. And for those of you that are still using work work, we can support that as well. Okay, no problem. And last but not least up here, mobile sales. Now this is different. It's a standalone product from our, our core WMS stuff. But the mobile sales is meant to extend Sage sales entry functions away from the office, cut the cord. So it could be that you have traveling salespeople that go out and sit across the desk from someone and take an order. It could be on a show floor, maybe inside your building, but at the will call counter. You want people to walk up and walk around and say, I want one of those or two of those. Well, you could do that in a tablet form, disconnected from Sage, but all the same customer information, addresses, contact info, pricing levels, all that jazz flows over. And if you want, you can hit a button and capture a signature. You can hit another button, send them an email of it. So it's a really powerful tool that can be used on a tablet. Any and all these, if you have any interest, please give us a call and talk to us after this or talk to your Sage reseller partner and they will set up that conversation, okay? Last slide I promise about us and then we'll jump into the meat of it. Uh, speed, something that really sets us apart. We did this million record challenge several years ago, loaded up a million records in Sage and said, go get one discrete piece of data and it returned it in less than 0.03 seconds. Scream it fast, even by computer standards, okay? Our job, our main focus is to make your people accurate, efficient, and timely. We don't want them waiting on the system. We want the system to constantly be working in a millisecond time frame so that they can be really productive. It's also very intuitive. Like I said, we've been doing this for over, over two decades. So we know what Sage wants. We know the order of operations. So we're gonna present screens to your users to collect data in the most efficient manner possible so that we can feed the beast. So that flows directly into Sage in exactly the manner that it wants it. And if there's one takeaway from any presentation that I do, I want it to be this last thing, support. We think this is the thing that sets us apart above all else. And if you ask anybody in the Sage 100 world, my hope is that support is the first word out of their mouth when they're talking about scan tools, okay? All right, so I said we're gonna talk about image capture. There's an inbound and an outbound version. We decided to split this because not everybody needs both. So rather than making everybody pay for something they don't need, we split it, priced it accordingly. So if only need you have is on the receiving side, you'd get the inbound. If only the shipping part is what's interesting to you, you can get the outbound. And of course they can be double stacked if you need to, okay? So let's take inbound first. Basically what inbound image capture allows you to do is probably exactly what you think so. We're gonna leverage the camera that's on the device. This is the back of a Zebra device that has a camera there. And so even if you have the optional pistol grip that turns it to a gun configuration, this camera is still available to you. We want you to be able to leverage that, take a picture, and then attach it back into Sage, okay? And I mentioned to you at the onset, this can be used standalone, just our application flowing into a folder in Sage, and you can go get those, you can then, you know, attach things to documents like invoices that go out. You can email them to vendors and show them things um, or email them out to customers or whatever. You can do anything you want to with it, but it works really nicely when paired with DSD's Instadocs, which some of you probably already have or are familiar with. So we want to show you both sides of that. So that's why we invited you to this conversation. So some things you can do like capture a bill of lading or a packing list. So any sort of receiving document that you get take a picture of it, have it um, connect up to Sage, and that way it's there for all time, okay? You don't have to worry about filing it. It's filed electronically. And then you don't have to worry about going and finding a piece of paper. You just click a few buttons and there, it's right there in the screen attached. And I'm gonna show you how all that happens in real time, okay? So if you get damaged packages, you can take a picture and for insurance claim, or maybe even just complain to your vendor, hey, look at the state of the stuff that was in when it got to me, okay? And like I said, these are going to be associated with the PO back at the header level, and I'm going to show you that when we get to the demo. So if you want to digitize your documents, digitize, I should say, that's a great use, okay? Make more efficient uh, capture the process so you don't have to send the paper into the office, have somebody scan it, and then attach it somehow. It can be instantly done on the dock all at one time, okay? 
and it can look just like this. See, busted skid. This one fell out. It's all dented. Let's take a picture. You can see the image on the handheld right here in real time. It's exactly what this is meant to do. You can also do multiple images for every transaction. So if you have one of the physical thing and another of a piece of paper, which is what I'm going to do when I do the demo, we'll be able to show you that. Okay. So you can store it. They're easy to access for all time. A lot of you may be in an industry like pharmaceutical, food industry, where you need to document things a little more than those people that uh, do lumber and metal that, that don't have those kind of needs. That, or maybe you are in a, 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 an industry where you just want to capture things. Or you're in the metal world. You want to capture heat number type information. You can scan all that in and have it there. And again, we talked about Instadox and all the great things that you can do there. By the way, Instadox is sold separately. That's, a, that's another thing that you would need to purchase if you wanted to use that. Okay. Oop, that's the outbound piece. So um, I'm sorry, I, I my scroll was off there. That was inbound. <laughs> Sorry, I got ahead of myself. There we go. Now we're at the outbound stage. So on the outbound, it's exactly all the same stuff. It's just in reverse. Okay. So instead of pictures of things coming in, we're taking pictures before things go out the door. So if you want to capture uh, a very nicely stacked pallet that's that's very pristinely shrink wrapped, you can send that out. So if it's damaged in route then you can prove to your customer and the shipper it didn't look like that when it left the building, okay? And if you want to streamline capturing shipping documents like packing lists, bills of lading, things like that, and then go ahead and send that out electronically to your customers, you can do that here, okay? So um, again, verifying that things are packaged properly, uh, digitizing the documents. If you ever get complaints that stuff is damaged, well, you could take a picture of it as it leaves your dock and prove to them that it wasn't in that state when it left you, that either the shipper or they did something to it. Okay? Like, look at this. Doesn't that look nice and pristine? Take the picture, close the door, put the lock on it. You can even send them a picture and say, this is what it looked like when it left our dock. So if it looks somewhere in other, some other condition when it gets there, then you have a conversation that you can have with the, the shipper and you probably stand in pretty good shape. Okay? All right, let's get to the demo. I'm going to stop my screen share here just briefly, and I'm going to switch to a different screen. Okay, so you should be seeing my Sage on my left and an emulation of my handheld there in the center. Now, I'm physically holding a Zebra device. OK, and what you're going to see on the screen over here is when I press a button on my handheld, it's going to represent that over here. Now, whenever I'm using this is a team viewer, which is an emulation that's packaged so you may be familiar with. Sometimes the text gets a little grainy and fuzzy because it's rendering it from my handheld. Looks great on the handheld, sometimes a little fuzzy over here. Uh, but hopefully you just understand that that's just the way it is when it does the emulation. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. I am at the main menu. The first thing we're going to talk about is on the inbound side. So I'm going to go into order processing, which is where we process purchase orders and sales orders. At the very top of the screen, I see PO receiving, so I'm going to tap on that. Okay. So I have a PO all set up and ready for us to go. And I'm going to go ahead and enter that. It's 10046. Now, anywhere that I have a data entry scheme or field on the screen like this, I can scan a barcode. So if you have a document that has a barcode on it, go ahead and scan that here instead of typing it, which is what I'm doing. OK, so let's get that loaded up. Now you see that little loading box that popped up there. That's a live lookup into the system. And remember, I talked about disconnected or connected environment. Now I can go disconnected. I've loaded up everything I need about this receipt. I can go offline from Sage without the Wi-Fi, do whatever I need to do Then I can sync up on the back end. OK, now. I'm doing this in a multi-bin environment, okay? This works equally as well in a non-multi-bin environment. If you are not familiar with what multi-bin is, what I'm talking about, then boy, do we need to have a conversation because if I got something to show you, okay? This again is another product in conjunction with a friend BSD. It's called multi-bin and it allows you to see the visibility of the same item in your warehouse in more than one place, exactly where everything is. So this is something that's built into one of those three versions of our WMS that I mentioned on the earlier screen. Okay. Now I have a location out there called receiving. 
So I'm going to go ahead and check this shipment into my receiving dock. You see the location says receiving. That's now locked in. The system now knows exactly where these parts are. And if somebody looks at it in Sage, they're going to be able to say, oh, Brian just received some. There's some sitting on the receiving dock. They just haven't been put away in storage yet. Okay. Now, if I was standing right next to you, I probably would be showing you how we scan barcodes right now. But since you're not seeing that, you're just seeing this flat image on the screen, I'm going to hit this search button over here, the little magnifying glass on the right, and that's going to bring up a list of all the items that are on this purchase order. Okay, so I've got item 1901, which is my orange widget. You see how the text is a little grainy. That's the team viewer kicking in there a little bit. And you can see on the right, I have a balance due of 10 of these that I need to be receiving. And the next item is item 1902. It's my gray widget, and I need 15 of those. So when I unbox this, I'm going to say, yep, I've got some orange widgets. I'll tap on that and hit accept. If I'd scanned a barcode, it would have just automatically gone onto the next screen. And it's telling me at the top, the quantity remaining is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and receive all 10 of those. Okay, the next screen, it's going to print a label. We talked about labeling earlier. Now, you may not want to print a label for every item. And in that case, for that item code, this screen just doesn't appear. But in this case, I do want to print a label. And it's asking me, do you want to print one label for everything you're receiving? See, it's a quantity of 10 over here, and it wants to print 10 labels. I could just as easily say, no, just print me one label. Maybe these are in one big box, okay? I'll go ahead and print that and advance onto the next screen. Now, if I hit that magnifying glass again, you'll see that item dropped off my to-do list because I received it complete, okay? If I had only received a partial, it would still be up there, and it would show me the balance that I have yet to be received, okay? So I'll go ahead and select this next one. Now, by the way, if I scan the wrong item, it will instantly give me feedback right here and say, nope, that's the wrong item, Brian. That's not on this PO. You can't receive that. Okay. So we're going to give the user instant feedback so they'll know if they're going down the wrong path. Okay. Likewise, if I enter a quantity here that's inappropriate, it's going to pop up a message and tell me that. But just to speed things along here, we're going to talk about image capture, not necessarily receiving. So I'm going to go ahead and receive all those and print my labels. Okay. I'm done. I've received both line items on this PO. Now let's get to the fun part, the image. See that little paper airplane looking icon at the top of the screen there? That's my sync or send button. I'm gonna hit that on my handheld and it flips me to this summary screen. It tells me that I've collected two records of data. I don't have any images yet though. So let's add one. I'm gonna hit capture image and then I'm gonna hit take photo. And when I do that, this is a live look into Brian's office and look at the state of this package. It's a mess, okay? I want to let somebody know that this is a problem. I'm going to take that picture. Now, I have my camera turned, my device turned sideways. That's why it looked kind of wonky there for you for a second. But once I take the picture, you can see sitting on the rug in my office, that's a very beat up box. I want to let somebody, either the vendor, the carrier, somebody know that. So I'm going to go ahead and save that image, okay? And now, if I want to take another image, maybe I have a document that I want to take a picture of. I'm going to hit take image. And I'm hovering over a document. And again, I have my phone, uh, my Zebra device turned sideways, which is why it looks like that to you. But I'll go ahead and hit collect that image and save it. And there you can see it rotated around so it can be viewed correctly. Okay. So I've collected both my image. One is a document. One is a physical piece of, it is a physical uh, box, a package that was delivered to me. I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. At the summary screen now, I show two images captured. And I can go ahead and hit send data okay now that's when i'm back syncing up with sage see i could have been disconnected that entire time and now i connect back up with sage and i send that information now let's jump over here into the purchasing system i'm going to go into receipt of goods entry and i want to show you the fruits of our labor now this is going to create a batch for me if one doesn't exist and i'll jump into that batch and i look at the receipt numbers there's only going to be one in there the steven supply order that we just did and when i look at the line items I can see what was ordered and what was received, 10 and 15, just like supposed to, okay? And if I look up here, I have this Instadox, okay? So if you have that Instadox integration, I can see this. Let me change these to large documents. And there's our jacked up box, and there's the document, okay? So I can attach these to something. I can, These are just regular JPEG images. I can email them out to somebody, to the carrier, to the the vendor, the manufacturer, whoever, and say, hey, look at this mess. This is why that thing was damaged. This is why I'm complaining. This is what it looked like when it got here. Um, and then I can store those, uh, you know, packing list, bill of lading, whatever it was, 
and capture all that and store it right here. Okay. All right. I'm going to jump out of purchasing now. Okay. And go back to my order processing menu. That was the inbound sign on the purchasing side. Let me jump in, show you the shipping side real quick. I'm going to blow through this really fast here because you've already basically seen the process. I just want to show you the opposite view. I'm loading up sales order number 202 here. Okay. And it says I've got one item, item 1901, my orange widget. I need five of them. And it's telling me the location to go. This is directed picking. It's directing me to exactly the bin location in my warehouse, aisle A, rack 100, shell for bin position 20. And it's reserved five of them there for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Again, that could be a barcode scan. Likewise, the location. Okay, I want to tell the system where I'm pulling it from. So I keep Sage inventory alive. I'll verify that. That's most likely a barcode scan as well. So that's probably just zap zap with the barcode scanner. Okay, and it's telling me it has allocated a reserve five of them for me in this bin. So I'll say yes. I'm going to go ahead and pick all five of those. Okay, and now again, when I get ready to ship, okay, I can see exactly what I've done and I want to capture an image. At this time, when I hit take photo, I have a very good looking box. Okay, I'll go ahead and capture that image. It's actually the exact same box. I just flipped it over to the good side and hid the bad part so you couldn't see it. Okay, and likewise, if again, if I want to take another picture, I want to capture a uh, a document. This happens to be a pick ticket that happens to be on my desk, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and click on. Uh, so there it is. So rather than a pick ticket, obviously, this might be the packing list, bill of material, whatever that you're sending out to the customer. It could be something. Um, I don't know that you'd send material safety data sheets that way, but if you're sending any sort of uh, specific information about this item, this shipment, uh, you could go ahead and attach that. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit accept. I will send my data back over to Sage. And if I jump over here into sales order and look at shipping data entry, again, the system will create a batch for me if one does not exist. And I'm going to have one record out there to look at. And if I look at Instadocs, there's my very nice looking package and there's the physical document, okay? And the reason it says Russia, I'm not a secret agent, I just have a world map <laughs> as my uh, desk cover, okay? And it just happens to be over the Russia part. Um, so that is a, a real quick overview of what our Instadocs and um, uh, image capture stuff is capable of doing. OK, now I'm going to stop my screen share for a moment and I'm going to turn things over to Miss Ashley Berger from DSD. She is the enhancement sales manager there. And I'm going to let her talk a little bit more about what Instadocs can do for you. Let me get uh, Ashley, I'll get you switched over where you can share. So you should be able to take over now, Ashley. And there we go. And Ashley, we can see you, but I personally cannot hear you. Yep. So thanks, Brian. So I'm Ashley. I'm with DSD, and we're going to be showing off Instadocs. It's going to work with the image capture that Brian just went over. Um, so you'll see I'm going to start in sales order, and I'm just going to go ahead and simply create an order here and just add some lines. And the only thing that you'll notice with Instadocs installed as Brian showed off is you'll see that tab six of Instadocs. So here's where you can add documents. So Instadocs is our document management solution. So you don't have to have those old nasty filing cabinets in your office anymore. So I have a file explorer just opened and I'm going to show that you can just grab anything. It can be copy, paste, you can right click or I can show off our drag and drop. So I can go ahead and highlight all of these and drag them over. So you'll see that you can have a picture, Excel file, even an Outlook message, uh, a Word document and a PDF. And these are then just simple double clicks and you can open them. So you can see that I actually have the um, one of our user manuals here open. 
And so starting kind of back at the top of the screen, you'll see the document directory. So this will be either a network location or OneDrive path that you guys have chose to set up for your Instadocs. And then the next down the screen is this button right here is the tagging. So with Brian's image capture, they are gonna do this for you when it comes from the handheld. So this, you can see it's tagged with 192. We have auto tagging capabilities that it's gonna tag with the order number and then the source and who did it and the date and time. So ScanForce's image capture will do this for you. And then when you drag and drop, it also does it as well. You can add your own. So we do have templates you can set up. And we also, it's a free text field, so you can type anything in here that you would like. Let's go ahead and accept that. And then right off of the tags, there's the searching capability. So then you can then search on those tags that you have added. And then we'll get to all of those documents. So here you can pull everything up. I didn't add any criteria or anything. So right now it's just pulling all documents that I have in the ABF directory for this customer that I have the order for. But great to be able to search on those documents. You can also double click and open from there as well. This is just a refresh, unless you have your screen open all day, you don't have to use that a lot or your OneDrive path and you have salespeople outside of Sage that maybe are moving documents for you. But other than that, your screen will stay pretty up to date. Then you can also open the folder. So this is gonna get you to the back end of Sage. The other thing is, so this is attached tag documents to email delivery. So if you go ahead and check this, anything that you have in here is also going to be sent out with that paperless office delivery, which is great. You can go ahead and so people, if you have, I like to say if you have kits and you like to send instructions of how to put those kits together, you can add that PDF document. And if you check this checkbox, that document and every anything that you have in the screen will go off. We do have a feature in setup where you can use a reserved word tag. And if you have that turned on, and you can see earlier where I had the tags, you can see I can say the email tag. So if I put the email tag on and I have that reserved word set up in my setup, only this document's going to go out because that's the only document that has that reserved word tag in it. But let me go ahead and show off. I'll print the order. The only other feature in this screen is if you electronically deliver it. So like I said, those documents will all go out. And while this is running, then we're then going to get a pop up saying, do I want to print the PDF into Instadocs? For demo purposes, I'm going to say yes. And um, in setup, you do have the ability for it to auto say yes, and then you don't get that nagging pop up. But so when I go ahead and say yes to that, and I hop back in my order, what that's going to do is it now created that PDF of the order. So this is the Sage generated PDF that automatically gets added to Instocks, which is great. The next thing that's gonna happen is when I go in invoice or shipping data entry where Brian went, is if I go ahead and add that and I grab my sales order that I was working on today, ship my lines here and go to Instocks, everything's gonna flow through, even that order. And then again, you have that email delivery. So here's where if you're shipping and you're taking a picture of that perfect box, it's not damaged when it went out my door, you can go ahead and add that here. I also, in my example, I have, say there was an email communication that you were talking during the order step that, hey, we wanna reference this later. That's where you can add the Outlook message. And any other documents, like I said, that I referenced that this could be a PDF for a kit, um, this could be your picture from that. You're coming from the image capture that was brought over, all of that good stuff. And same thing, if we go ahead and print this, you will get that PDF as well of the invoice. So, and I'm gonna get that nagging pop-up again. Again, that can be a setup option that you can just have it automatically say yes. So you will not get that. And, but this is great. Let's say yes. And I'll hop back in for you guys so you can see that now you have the full story. So you have your PDF that was from the image capture. That's great. Um, if there was an Excel file, say you had price quote or something that you had in an Excel file, you can grab that. There's my communications, my invoice, my order, an additional document. And there, say there's that PDF as well for that kit that they ordered. So that's the invoice entry. The only other thing that I like to show off 
is if we hop into customer maintenance, you'll see that customer maintenance is the end all be all directory and it holds all of your documents. So you can see that there's that PNG file that I added, the Excel file, I've got a lot of other things, but here's that Outlook attachment that I added and then you will see my invoice and then further on down you would see the sales order so this holds everything the customer directory and that's where you have again your searching capabilities and all of that in here as well so that's great you do have some archiving features for the sake of time i'll just mention it and then the only other thing that i really like to show off is just hop into the setup quickly and i will like to point out that brian went over purchasing and sales order the purchase order works just the same as a sales side. Instadocs really mirrors each other. So it's great we were only went over the sales, but purchase the order works the same as well. So you'll see the setup. So we set the path. We have some naming convention options here. Again, that's where that auto prompt happens. The generate one email is a great feature as well that people like. So you can turn this on and if you have batches that have five different invoices in it for one customer what this will do and this is turned on even if i turn this on it's still turned on by customer basis so you can turn it on in customer maintenance but they'll get one email with those five invoices and people love this because it's why do i want to get five different emails and then that lastly is just that reserve word text you can turn that on and like i said i put email in there earlier and that's great if you only want to send certain emails and not everything that's in that Instadocs panel. And that's everything that I have. I know that was quick. So if I'll hand it back off to Brian. I'd like to thank Scanforce for inviting DSD to this webinar and uh, we'll get our contact information put back up for you. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for participating. I think that's great. I think it really helps round out our solution like i said our solution uh, will stand alone and uh you know can work in that in that you know environment or dovetails very nicely into instabox so we're going to hang around for some q a now but before we start that let me just get to say thank you for everyone for attending the contact information is up on the screen if you have any questions about either instadox or the scanforce offerings that info email comes to me, the enhancements comes to Ashley. So please reach out to us and let us know if you have any questions. 